Welcome to the ElfQuest Collector's Guide, showcasing a different collectible or unboxing video each week. I'm your pack leader for this hunt, Mandy Roncalio Meyer, or as I'm known around the ElfQuest web world as my elf self, Shadowfire. Now before we get started this week, I wanted to inform my viewers that I'm going to be switching over to a bi-weekly or once every two weeks schedule from now on. The once a week schedule just seems to be a little bit too hectic for my lifestyle right now. I'm getting a little stressed trying to keep up with that schedule and as you guys can see, my videos are getting out late. So I'm gonna switch to once every two weeks. That way it's a little bit of stress off my shoulders. I won't be letting you guys down because you'll be expecting a week in between and I think everybody will be a little bit happier with it. So from here on out, once every two weeks with maybe an unboxing video or maybe some more bloopers thrown in in between just as extra videos. And then hopefully in the future, I can go back to doing once a week videos. But for now, this is how it's gonna work. Hope everybody understands. All right, now back to our regularly scheduled program. And today we're gonna be talking about the Dark Horse Minibus. The Dark Horse Minibus of Cutter, Lita, and Skywise were released on December 13th, 2007 and are limited to only 1,500 pieces of each character. Each bus stands at about 6 inches tall, with Lita being just a slight bit taller at 6 and a quarter inches, probably due to her glorious hair. They were designed by sculptor Tim Bruckner, with significant guidance by both Wendy and Richard Peeney. And in my opinion, and a lot of fans' opinions, these are the best 3D representations of the elves to date. If you have all three of the busts, you can kind of get a feel for their relationship together. You can kind of see the synergy flowing between them. Lita, she's lovingly reaching towards Cutter, while at the same time inviting the viewer to come closer. Skywise is almost teasing the viewer, like, hey, check out this little treasure I've got right here in my hand, while also keeping a hand on his sword hilt, just in case. And then we have Cutter, good old Cutter, wise, powerful, strong leader Cutter, standing there, arms crossed, new moon out in one hand, kind of eyeing you like, hmm, what you gonna do? I'll give you a shot, but if you mess with us, you see this sword? It's gonna cut you. Also, the busts feature this really cool pivoting feature, where if you see the base, you can actually turn them so that they can change direction and point whichever way you choose for them to do. The base can point one way, the figure can point another way. I just think it's really cool. I read about the pivoting base online and I kind of figured that maybe the pivot feature would be kind of chintzy, rickety, maybe loose. No, it is it is smooth. I'm not trying to make it this smooth. It's a nice, firm, steady twist. Only thing I have to say is you do have to be careful with the Skywise figure. The uh, cross guard for his sword kind of bumps his the uh, the tree base a little bit on his. At least it does on mine, and I'm so, so I'm sure it does on others. So if you do get the Skywise figure, just be a little careful when you turn him, otherwise that sword hilt might get a little broken. They originally sold for $49.99 each, and Skywise and Lita can actually still be found on Dark Horse's official store and comics distributor, Tifa, or Things from Another World. I'll add a link in the description below to that store, and I'll also add it in an annotation right over here. Cutter, on the other hand, has become quite elusive, and he's actually been sold out on Tifa for several years now. He does occasionally pop up on eBay, but the prices for him have just been going up, up, recently. So if you see him pop up on eBay for a price you can afford, I suggest you nab him quick because he's getting hard to find, folks. A couple of years ago, my fellow ElfQuest fan and soul sister Ray Vien, hi Ray, bought me my cutter statue for the at the time going for price of around $60. Now if you look around on eBay, if you can even find the cutter statue, his prices are more around the $120 level and he actually sells for that price. So the current price on eBay does seem to be around $125, but don't forget that's just for Cutter. You can find Lita and Skywise on Tifa, a link in the description below. Don't pay more than that on eBay. I know there are sellers that are trying to sell Lita and Skywise for around the same prices as the Cutter bust, and once again, they didn't do their research. Do your research. Okay, so let's talk about the busts themselves. I'm actually going to pick them up and I'm gonna hold them closer to the camera so you guys can hopefully get a little bit better view of each one. Here we have Skywise. You can see all the detail put into them. His, the string that the lodestone is on is actually string. It's not a solid piece of the product. It's all loose. 
so that's kind of cool. He's got full 360 detail. Uh, I don't know if my camera will pick it up correctly, but if you look at his hair, he has this beautiful like pearlescent sheen to his hair that is just absolutely perfect. I think I never really imagined that in Skywise's hair until I got the bust. And now I, I can't imagine the Stargazer without that magical metallic pearlescent sheen that he's got on the bust. So if you have uh, the Skyways bust for yourself, I think you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, get him, he's gorgeous. And then on the bottom of the figures, we have the certificate of authenticity, basically. It's got your numbered area, like my Skyways is number 593 of 1500. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Don't want to get out of my lighting too much either. So there's my, my Skyways number. And then here we have good old tried leader Cutter and all of his powerful glory. I love how Cutter's hair seems to almost be moving in the wind on this figure. Very, very action oriented. Um, once again, just gorgeous, immense detail in everything about these busts. I absolutely love them. They are freaking gorgeous, folks. I'm telling you, if you don't have these, try to get them for yourself. They are my favorite piece of my collection. As you can tell, I'm handling them very, very carefully because I don't want anything to happen to these babies. These are gorgeous. So for my cutter bust, I actually got really lucky. I got a very low number. I have number 168 out of 1500. That's a really low number and I love it. Thank you once again for my cutter bust, Ray. I love you so, sister. And I love my cutter bust. Mwah. All right. And then finally, last but not certainly not least, we have gorgeous Lita. Oh, so beautiful Lita. I love, I don't know if you can see it too well, but I love her hands. If you look at her hands, they're just so delicate, so elegant and gorgeous. And just the little fingers and her bracelets, just... The detail in these busts are absolutely gorgeous. Sculptor Tim Bruckner did an amazing, amazing job bringing these characters to life. I, I, I just can't get over how gorgeous these are. I want to see more products from Dark Horse that have this level of detail and, and beauty to them. I think if we had more of these kinds of collectibles, we'd get them, wouldn't we, folks? Let's start writing the Dark Horse more. I'll put an annotation right over here with all the info on how to contact Dark Horse. We need to all team up and shout at Dark Horse. We need more awesome ElfQuest merch like this, right, folks? Now, awesomely enough, my Lita number is actually really close to my Skywise number. My Skywise was numbered 593. My Lita is numbered 592. So I almost have a full set of very similar numbers, but I'm not too particular about that. I'm happy just to have these three busts because they are elusive, they're gorgeous, and they are very, very, very worth having. Okay, time for this week's howl. Ayoo! Damon T. asked what my preferred reading order is. Now, to be honest, I actually haven't read ElfQuest from start to Final Quest since the Final Quest even began, since before the Final Quest began. Uh, I probably do for another read-through all the way through the story, but I think I'm going to wait until Final Quest is completely done with, and then I can really read from start to finish. Um, but I do occasionally go back and read certain stories. Dreamtime, of course, is an important one uh, in All But Blood. But I'll jump around and I'll read the separate stories when it seems prudent to what's going on in Final Quest or what's going on in discussions in the Facebook groups or things like that. But I haven't actually gone from beginning to end for many years. When I do, it will be in the same order that's what's presented in the archives on ElfQuest.com. I'll put a link in the description and an annotation. I find that that's the best presented uh, reading order. Uh, it makes sense the way that they have it presented. My only exception is that I usually try to read Metamorphosis and Volume 2 before I get to jink the Rebels and Future Quest, just because it happens that way timeline-wise. Uh, all the stories within Volume 2 and Metamorphosis happen before I jink the Rebels and Future Quest, so it just makes sense to read those before that. Amber P. asked what my favorite storyline arc is. Now, that's a little bit different than what Damon T. asked. Damon T. asked what my favorite era in ElfQuest was. Amber is asking what my favorite 
storyline arc is. To differentiate, in my opinion, an arc is a section of stories, though they may not be chronological in order. An era is a section of the timeline in the history of the world of ElfQuest. At least that's how I interpret the difference between these two questions. As I did with Damon's question, I'll give you my top three favorite arcs. They are, in no particular order, the original quest, in all but blood, and dream time. Those three arcs are so incredibly important to the story, overall story of ElfQuest, that I feel you should not read ElfQuest and not read those stories. They all need to be read. They are so important. Read those three if you haven't already. Thanks for your amazing questions, guys and gals. If you'd like to get a howl in the next video, or if you have any questions or suggestions for my channel, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. The next showcased item is going to be the Starblaze Dawning Editions. Thanks, Amber P, for the suggestion! That's it for this week's episode of the ElfQuest Collector's Guide. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope you learned some cool new info about items from our favorite fandom, ElfQuest! Please join me and the rest of the tribe in the many ElfQuest-based fan groups around Facebook, including the official fan group, which is named ElfQuest, as well as the ElfQuest Collectors Unite group, dedicated to helping you with all your ElfQuest needs or wants. I'll add some links in the description below. Also, don't forget to get your questions or suggestions down in the comment section below or on one of the many ElfQuest-based fan groups on Facebook. And if you enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and if you really feel like it, give me a share so other people can find me too. Until next time, shade and sweet water and happy hunting.